We're gonna go through and read some viewer comments on our frugal lifestyle. Some of them are just questions. Some of them are some uh, more negative comments and then some of them are some positive comments. I thought that we would do a, a whole wide range of some of the comments that we get about our frugal lifestyle. Okay, so the first question is, do you ever get tired of being frugal? I feel like we live in a very sustainable way. I do not feel like that we're overly frugal. Yeah, I mean, also like being frugal is also more just about being intentional with how you spend your money and like spending money on the things that you choose to spend your money on. So I don't really ever get tired of like choosing to spend my money on the things that I want and not spending my money on the things that I don't want. We do, in fact, spend money. We just spend money on things that are particularly interesting to us. Like, I mean, yeah, there's a balance. Like, you have to make sure that you're spending money on things that you enjoy doing. It's kind of like two extremes. Like, we will go through periods where we don't spend money on hardly anything. Like, we were living on $850 a month because we were, are so frugal, we hardly have any bills at all. And we, by doing that, because we're, we do that, we are able to save a lot of money and spend that on doing fun things in a frugal way, though. Like, we never, like, blow through our money. Yeah, and we really do that mostly by not, by choosing intentionally what we're buying. Like, not wasting money. I also think that, like, when people are just starting out budgeting and stuff, they feel like they're having things taken away from them. Like, they can't do this and they can't do that when like over time when it becomes like your routine to only like have a baseline spending really low and then you get to spend money on the things that you want to spend money on like you don't ever feel like you're having anything taken away from you you are your mindset has changed to where you're you're getting to add stuff to your life instead of stuff being taken away. Does yeah. that make sense? It becomes less of a you can't have that to uh, you can either have this or you can have this. And you choose what you want to have. Next question was, do you ever just stop calculating every aspect of your life and have fun? Um, I feel like we actually have a lot of fun. Like I'm like a huge child. Like, I'm constantly having fun. We've traveled all across the country. I picked Universal for our anniversary. <laughs> like, Disney. Yeah, like, when we lived in Florida, we had got season passes to Universal for a whole year and then to Disney for a whole year. And we were able to go there, like, approximately once a week all year. And, you know, that was, that was fun. I don't know who... Also, fun doesn't necessarily have to cost money, and fun is relative to the person that you are. Mm -hmm. um, I have fun going hiking. I love going hiking. I like to That's go really hiking. I also, I like to take pictures of stuff. I like to collect bugs, like dead bugs for my art things, you know? Like, I like to crochet, like... Stuffed animals. I like to read books and go to the library. All those are free things. There's a whole lot of fun free things that you can do. And like also calculating and budgeting can actually be fun when it's not stressful. Um, We're I autistic. We're a family of autistic people. We literally calculate everything. I have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. There's nothing Which may that I do that is not calculated over and over and over again. That may be maybe a disconnect is that people, some people have a really hard time calculating and, and budgeting and planning and stuff. And so to them, it's a lot of work. But like to us and to some people, that's just like the way our brain works is like we calculate stuff and like we have it strategically planned out just because that's just what we do. So it's not even that big of a deal. Plus on my channel, my channel is about being frugal and that aspect of our life. So I share that a lot on our channel about us, about the, the financial aspect of our life, but there's a whole lot more to our life than just finances. I feel like we share that aspect of our life because it's something we just naturally do and it's something that we're really good at. Like if you want to know how to travel somewhere 
and do it on a super low budget, we probably can figure it out. Sometimes we just sit around and plan adventures that we may never do. It's just that's what we enjoy doing. Or maybe we will do them. Well, and also if you have a goal to like go and like do something, like you can strategically plan out how to do it super frugally. And like somebody might not like doing that. Maybe for somebody else, it might be easier for them to just go and make a whole lot of money so they don't have to sit there and think about it and they can just go spend all their money. And that is easier for them. But for us, it's easier for us to like strategically plan out how to do it as cheap as possible. Even if we made a ton of money, we would still do that because that is just the way that we function. We could be super rich and nobody would ever even know because we just would still be exactly the same way that we are now. Maybe and one day we will be super rich and nobody will even know. I'm curious, what are your plans for retirement? Love your channel. Um, well, the at the rate they're going as raising the retirement age, we're never going to reach the age of retirement, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. But from the aspects, the broad aspects of retirement, the amount of money that people are putting back right now into their retirement fund, which on average is about a million dollars, that is going to do nothing. People that retirement. have retirement funds. Yeah. I, I think it's important to point out that, like, I can't remember this. Most statistic. people don't have a Yeah, maybe I'll put it up here, but, like, 50% of... Americans have less than $1,000 in their retirement or something like that. Most of Americans have less than $1,000 in their bank. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we do have assets that we are planning at some point in our life that we will sell off and that will fund the rest of our life. But right now our goal is to live as healthy as we possibly can. So hopefully we will be able to work way into the future. Frankly, to be honest with you, I have severe ADHD on top of my autism and I have no ability to relax and just not do anything. So I'm going to need to continue to work forever. I also think like the perspective of what retirement is when you are working like your typical nine to five job up until the point where you retire versus somebody's mindset who is working for themselves and you know, making their own money and doing the things that they want to do in their own time. Like it's a completely different mindset. The life that we're living now, we don't have a nine to five job. We are making money in an adaptable way in ways that work for us based on where we are in our life and what we want to do at the time. And that will just continue to evolve as we get older and change. I think like one of the most valuable things that we have learned is that you work to live, you don't live to work. And we we enjoy our life. Like we don't feel like, I feel like I, I don't feel like I have a much worse life than somebody that that is retired. Yeah, we, we do not have somebody giving us a check or a bunch of money in the bank, but we work to live. And that's- I, We have an extra 40 hours a day, a day. week. No, I mean, that's a long day. <laughs> we have an extra 40 hours a week to choose how we want to make money, how we want to work. We get to decide all of that stuff. And also like with the retirement thing, like it's not that we don't have any money in savings and we're not saving money. We are, we do have plans, but those plans are adaptable and changing and evolving. It's just not your typical like plan that everybody else has, I guess. So it's hard for people to understand what a retirement plan is. But I did do a whole video on retirement that I'll link up here and then down in the description. Uh, do you and your husband have full-time jobs? How are you supporting your family? We kind of touched on that, I guess. We both are working. We are both doing things that bring in an income and we are providing for our family through like this YouTube channel is one example of a way that we are making money. We've also done some like unconventional things as far as renovating houses, like buying a house, I guess it would be called like a flip where you a live in flip, you buy a house, you renovate it and then you sell it and you live in it while you're, I didn't explain that well. Why don't you explain that part? Your live in flip. It's a live in flip. It's where you, 
you buy a buy. house, live in it, renovate it while you're living in it, and then sell it. Yeah, where you're doing the work, you're putting in the sweat equity to fix up the house, and you make money off of that. So um, that is a job at the time because it is a lot of work to renovate a house and to live in the house while you're renovating it is uh, a way that we've made money. Being frugal provides us the flexibility to be able to make as much money as we want or as little money as we want. There's just not that stress there to have like all of these bills that you, it, it decreases your likelihood to be able to take risk. So if you have a whole lot of like baggage on you and a whole lot of bills that you're having to pay, you're not able to take the risk of, you know, buying a house and renovating it and waiting for it to sell or, you know, going and making your own money, starting a YouTube channel and working really hard at that because in the beginning, you're not making any money and then it's exponential growth. So we've been able to take more risk because we are frugal and hopefully those risks will pay off in the future. Yeah, we spend a majority of our time coming up with plans on how to make money outside of the box because that is not, when you have an employee, when you are an employee and you are a job, you work for a job, you're a number at that job and you are making, you may make like a dime, but you're making somebody else a dollar. And if you actually put that effort into yourself, then you would be making yourself a lot more money. And we spent, we spend a lot less time like working now than we ever did before. Like, <laughs> and sometimes we do work. We, I bet we work more than 40 hours a week a lot of times, but it's like doing work that we actually enjoy and is like productive for us and is benefiting us. So that just feels a lot better than when you're working for somebody else benefiting them. Yeah, we are always growing ourselves, whether that be learning new things or starting new businesses or making websites or, you know, stocks or learning about stocks or whatever, like, understanding finances like your answer to financial freedom is to actually learn finances and everyone will tell you that's the best investment that you can make is to invest in yourself and your education particularly when it comes to becoming financially literate yeah and also the best way to learn stuff is to do stuff so if you want to start your own business and like make your own money you have to do that and you don't just start off by doing that at a big scale, you have to start off at a small scale and you have to learn all the little pieces before you know the big stuff. And a lot of your success is right on the other side of, of what you're afraid of. Like And failure. You, yeah, you have to realize <laughs> you have to realize that a lot of people don't go outside the box. They don't are not entrepreneurs because people are scared. People like to have that structure. They want to have a check that is going to come in every week or every two weeks and they will live by that even if whatever they're doing is making them miserable because they're too scared to do anything else and living your life in that kind of fear is one extremely not good for you and two you will never ever reach success in that way i want to say that some people are happy doing that and that's completely fine if you're happy doing that and it's your choice to do that then that's fine that's the, what's best for you. But if you're not happy working that job for somebody else, then then don't be scared to change, change it up and do something else. So I'm going to read some, some negative comments because they're kind of funny. Didn't, was the other ones not negative? Those weren't negative. Those are just questions. Uh, One of them was negative, I guess. Okay. Save a lot of money and the planet stop breeding. Why does anyone brag about being frugal? It's not an accomplishment. Um, that was educated. <laughs> <laughs> so how is, what is the environment, what, save the environment? Save the planet for like, stop breeding, so stop having kids. Okay, so I'm gonna say that people who are frugal 
and actually are intentional in the way that they live are significantly better for our planet. You know, because I don't just, we just don't buy, buy a bunch, a bunch of, of stuff. We don't prepackage garbage and fill our landfills with junk, you know. That's um, actually one of the reasons why we are frugal. Like, one of our mindsets is to be really, like, conscious spenders and not buy a, anything in excess. Like, we don't waste our money on buying stuff we don't need just to go and throw it away. It is interesting to me, though, that someone would comment on a video of people they don't know being so pretentious just because they feel as though we have less money than them. Yeah. Well, and also being frugal is not something to be, what did he say? It was not an accomplishment. This was a guy? Um, I mean, I don't know. I assumed it was a guy because, because the person said stop breathing. I don't know. I felt like it was a guy. Guy doesn't have a profile picture. I can only imagine why. It's not an accomplishment to be frugal. Is I think just not understanding what frugal means because it is. How could it not be an accomplishment to spend money on the things that you want to spend money on? I think that he thinks that being frugal means being cheap or you know not having any money, being poor. Being frugal means poor and cheap, which is not what frugal means at all. It means being intentional, which I think is, is an accomplishment. I just lost brain cells. Okay. From that. <laughs> yeah. right. uh, we're going to save this one for the end. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. This is a rant and I just, we'll just save it for the end. Okay. Um, okay. This is about, this was from the video where I posted with, with me in the truck, in our truck. So we have a, what is, I can't think, what, is, what year is it? A 2014 Toyota Tundra truck that I film in sometimes. And whenever I do that and I talk about being frugal and living on a low income and stuff, people have a lot to say about it. Um, but I would just like you to read, listen to some of these comments. Amazing the money on that truck could have gone to your kids. 20 years of car payments and massive weekly gasoline bills and your kids are going to be like, mommy, why couldn't we afford X? Oh, because mommy thought a dumb truck was more important to you, honey. Aren't you proud? So our truck costs less, way less than the average vehicle in America. And I also researched this truck for months and I picked the exact lowest year with the correct engine. For this truck. It was a very well thought out purchase, which that truck has taken us all the way across the United States. Um, clearly, this person has never sat on the side of the road with it 100 degrees outside because their car broke down with their kit. So, um, also, I think it's really weird that people assume that, that our kids do without. Our kids go to Universal. They go to Disney. Like, we've went on multiple trips. Like... We've moved to Florida and lived at the beach for three years, you know, to experience that. You know, like, I feel like... I don't know. People who say that our kids don't have enough um, have clearly never been poor. When we got together... Now, given Katie's family is significantly wealthier than my family, Katie comes com from a completely different world. And the, by wealthy, we're, we're middle class. My family's middle class. Yeah, which is, you know, that's how far, <laughs> that's how far my family is not. Asher, where did you grow up? Appalachia. Rural Appalachia. And so whenever we first got together, like the first Christmas, her family bought the kids so many presents. I swear I've never seen that many presents in my life under a Christmas tree. It was insane. And there was years growing up, I never even got Christmas. I was never, I never flew in a plane until I was an adult. I never saw a beach until I was what, like 19? I, I, I was, I worked all the time when I was a kid. Like our kids barely have to do anything. I feel like that would be a really good idea for a video is to kind of do a video on like your perspective of frugality and our lifestyle coming from 
extreme poverty in the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like she does videos about being frugal and helping other people be frugal. And I have to realize that in my eyes, I, I don't feel like we're struggling at all. I feel like that I'm living the best life I've ever lived because we actually have so much more now. Anybody who, you know, obviously, I, I don't know how exactly to say it. What are you trying to say? I don't know. I feel like a lot of people who think that... They don't understand what it actually means to do without. Like, they don't understand what, like, real extreme poverty struggle is. Yeah, like... Especially like, from a child's perspective. Yeah, they do not understand how, like, hard it is for some people. And, like, what kids actually go through and what it means to do without. And I'm going to tell you, our, our kids don't do without. And, I mean, I don't want our kids to do without. And even though I experienced that and I didn't have stuff, I would never wish that And for our kids. And that is why that we are so responsible also in the way that we spend money is because we want to make sure that our kids never do without, like the way that I had to. Also, side note about the comment is that he assumed that we have massive car payments. Is that what he said? Massive weekly gasoline bills and 20 years of car payments. Uh, we were able to pay cash for our truck because we're frugal and we uh, save our money and uh, bought a nice used reliable vehicle. It's just the difference between buying something valuable versus buying, buying something that's not valuable. Okay, this one is just kind of something that made me think, okay? I truly believe that everybody is where they are in life based on the choices that they have made. I disagree. It's, yeah, I, I agree. I also disagree. I understand where she's coming from that a, a lot of where we are is based on our choices. Like our choice to live frugally, live on a low income, not have a nine to five job, like all of those are choices where we live, where, you know, all of those are choices. However, everyone starts out at a different spot and people have health issues. They have disabilities. If you're elderly, um, I was a single mom and had two young kids. That puts me at more of a disadvantage than somebody who is like a two-parent family and has an education. Some people have higher education than other people. There's a variety of factors that play into that. And while everybody has choices to change that, like everyone starts out in a different space. Yeah, success is definitely relevant to the person. It's kind of like, for example, if you're going to the gym and you go to the gym and you see like these big bodybuilder guys or whatever, and then you see this other person who is not very in shape, okay? You cannot assume that the bodybuilder guy has been there at the gym working out every single day and is better than the guy who is just kind of just average because you don't know where he came from. Like he could have been 600 pounds. Like you do, you never look at someone and immediately judge their situation. We need to just be a whole lot less judgmental of other people. And there's a lot of negative assumptions all the time. And some people need to try and be a little bit more positive in their judgment of other people and know that they don't understand somebody's entirety of their story. Like my grandmother said, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. That doesn't mean you guys share it with everybody. <laughs> How long will you choose to live under stress versus succumb to the necessity of a some kind of traditional work job business? I'm curious why the desire to fight that so strongly. Shit, I'm like a Buddhist monk now. My life is way less stressful than when I had a regular job. Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's, it was... 
It was very stressful. Not everybody thrives in having a job. We are not happy in that side of that box of having a job. It is extremely stressful for us and we do way better on our own. Yeah, I also don't understand why there is the assumption that there is a necessity of some kind of traditional work job business. Like why traditional? Here's the thing, the job market and everything is changing so much. Technology has changed the way that we are going to work and it's going to continue to change very rapidly in the future and we need to be adaptable to that and take it's okay to take advantage of the internet and all of that to work like i don't like the traditional job has changed you don't have to have a traditional job i kind of feel like that most of the people that comment stuff like that are Older. Not millennials. We're called millennials for a reason, okay? Like, we are part of the technology boom. Well, I honestly think that people our age, a lot of the times, have a hard time with that, too. I feel like we're a weird transitional generation. I'm not really young millennial, though. So. <laughs> I'm an old millennial. <laughs> uh, I'm way better at tech than you. Yeah. Yeah. So, like... I just don't see a reason to not do like tech jobs make so much money and it it allows a lot more freedom and it's possible i don't think people understand that it is actually possible now to work from home start a business from home and not have that traditional mindset of work so anyway i don't feel like we will ever one we're not stressed out about our situation I mean, life in general is stressful and you will always find something to stress out about. Even if you have a million dollars, you're going to find something to stress out about. If you have a million dollars and you're not worried about your finances, you're going to be worried about wanting to go to the gym and get ripped or to buy the next new thing or just whatever it is that you are going to choose to worry about. Um, I think people worry way too much about money, you know? Money is just one factor to life. It's what we talk about a lot on this channel, but, but our, all of our decisions that we make, like finances is a factor to our decisions, but it is not ever the only factor to our decisions. I wonder if you take government benefits. Jesus Christ. The obsession for government benefits. Everybody needs to stop making people who qualify and need government, government benefits feel bad about it. Okay. I have been on government benefits when my kids were little and I escaped an abusive relationship and I needed to get out of that and figure things out on my own. And I proudly took food stamps and because I needed it at the time, I needed it at the time. And I don't think that anybody who qualifies for government benefits should feel bad about that. There are qualifications in place for a reason and if you qualify, then you need it. It's also not easy to get government benefits. You're, you were telling me about your mom. Yeah, my, my, when I was growing up, I had a single mom who had a house payment that was like $600 and two kids. She did not qualify for food stamps. And so we got no, we didn't have any government assistance at all. Honestly, I got kicked off. My mom made nine, like $9.25 an hour. And I got kicked out of the school lunch program. And the lunch ladies would give me free food after lunch. Like, it's it's really not that that easy, you know? And everybody needs to really stop worrying about government assistance for poor single moms and stuff that need it. And be more worried about big tax cuts for big companies, you know? like Or even government benefits for families. Like, like if we qualify for government benefits, then that means we qualify for the government benefits. I mean, listen, you have to work and all of that stuff to qualify for government benefits. The income threshold is very low and it's not easy to qualify. So it's, it's not just like, I don't know, it's so silly. But people assume that because we're frugal and because we live the way that we do, that we just are racking in government benefits and that's the way that we're surviving. Okay, ready? 
There are jobs out there for those who really want to work. Too many lazy people out there. Young hard workers get ahead and don't usually have money problems. Um, we're very well aware of the jobs out there. It's not a getting a job problem. Well, kind of is for me because, you know, I do, I do terrible in interviews. Did you see that, that yeah. nat? That was weird. <laughs> I am very far from lazy. I'm actually extremely hyper and extremely productive all the time. And my entire family just works constantly. Quite frankly, it makes you feel unproductive when you're working a job. I have the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Just go in and do the same thing every day. Go in, get the job done. It's the husband's duty to provide bearing health issues. Um, Is it your job to provide for me, Asher? Well, this just screams misogyny. Uh, you have to understand something is that when we live in a time where one person in a household can't really just work and take care of the other one. Also on top of that, if both of us were to get a job, like a regular job, daycare for our child would take up the income of one of our jobs. So it makes no sense for both of us to work an outside of the house job. So we're back to just one of us working outside. But here's the thing is I feel like in society, part of the issue of why that it's always put on the man to go to work and take care of the family is because we now have a society where men are no longer capable of caring for their offspring. So the fact that my wife works, you know, cause she has the YouTube channel that everybody knows about. Um, and I would be taking care of our kid a majority of the time while she's working would is just, really odd to people simply because men in our society have proven to women that they lack the competence to care for their offspring. Unfortunately, it's, it's women feel like that they can't even leave their kid with their husbands. Also, on the other side of that, you have to think about something. So if any of, why is it so bad for me to work? Now there's been times in our relationship where I've worked and she didn't. And there's been times in our relationship where she worked and I didn't, but it's both of our jobs to equally provide. Like we're both financially responsible at times for our family. So let's just take a broad family here. So in American society, there's a lot of situations where one person in relationships works, which generally is put off on the male in the relationship. But here's the thing. If we were to split up, it is, I am at a greater advantage than she is. So if we were to split up and she was to have work history and I didn't, I'm more likely to be able to find a job. No, if you were to have work history and I didn't. Well, I don't need work history. So oh, as okay, a male, okay. I see what you're saying. a job is more likely to hire me without having a past career than they are to hire you. And it's naturally assumed in our society that if a woman has a child, she's the primary caregiver for that child, so she's going to have to miss work to take care of it. So if me and her both went and applied for the same job with even the same amount of experience, I'm going to get that job. And you're going to get paid more. <laughs> and I'm going to get paid more. So in the event that we were to no longer be together, me taking care of our child and her having the job actually benefits her. Part of you providing for our family is allowing me the space and opportunity to be able to build myself up so that I am capable of taking care of myself and I have the advantage of taking care of myself if something were to happen to you. Like that is the opposite of, like that is providing for us. I also like doing what I'm doing. Like, anyway. I don't, I, I do not want a wife that is dependent upon me. And I don't want to be dependent upon somebody else. Like we are equal in our relationship and our family dynamic. And I want her to grow and have an education and be self-fulfilled doing her own thing, just and as I, I'm self-fulfilled doing mine. And I want you to be able to be there for our kids. I don't want you to miss out on all of that because you're having to go to work to provide for us. Every part of the family unit 
is valuable. And I also think we're running into the issue of where a lot of people see the woman's job as being the homemaker and stuff, but it's not equal value to the man. Like a man who goes to work and provides for his family, whoever has the job has more value than the woman who stays at home and, and washes clothes and cooks and takes care of the kids. And I'm sorry, taking care of the kids way harder. <laughs> and I, women who stay at home do not have enough respect for their for what they have to go through. Okay. There is days where our kid wakes up and just chooses violence. <laughs> okay. Like we're barely surviving. Okay. Toddler and teenagers. Yeah. Both are bad. Both are bad in their own way. And so it's, it, it's just, it shocks me how pushed to one side it is. And it just makes no sense. I mean, if you want to have that family dynamic, I don't really, I don't really care, but I also am like, don't judge everybody else's family dynamic in the way that they, they do things. That's not, that's not the way it has to be. If you want to, one of you guys want to work and not work, it, that's up to you. I'm going to read some positive comments because we've read some negative comments. And I know that there's way more positive people that watch us than the negative people, but the negative comments are just more entertaining to, to go over. And it's also like the negative things that we experience in our real life, like, and the negative things that other people experience. Like, it's really hard to hear the negative stuff that people say to you all the time. So, uh, I don't know. Speak for yourself, I don't really care. Well, I mean, it's hard for other people. <laughs> I mean, it bothers me a little bit too. It bothers me that people are so ignorant. I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong, but okay. <clears throat> Positive comment. Good grief, people. She has never said that she's poor. She has only ever said she's frugal. Being frugal and making good choices has her in the position that she's in now. It took years and hard work. She gets it, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't understand, like... Why other people don't understand that. Yeah, we're not poor. We choose to live intentionally. And that comment got 130 likes, so... Like I said, like other it's people like the understand It's like smartest comment too. you've read so far. This one's good too. This is the difference between frugal and cheap. Quality over quantity. And you're 100% right about never going to please everyone. You're not ever going to please everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, cheap and frugal are not the same thing. After watching this video, I realized a person has to be very brave to have a YouTube channel because there are a lot of mean people out there who enjoy hurting people's feelings. Thank you for being brave. There's a lot of keyboard warriors that sit behind a screen and put other people down to make themselves feel better. Yeah, somehow people think that because somebody has a, like a social media account and they're sharing information on that, that that gives other people a right to be like, mean to like that gives somebody a right to be mean to them and to say whatever they want to to them because they're putting themselves out there which is i i don't understand that like like why do you feel that way why is it okay to be mean to somebody because they're sharing information with you they're i don't know it doesn't make sense to me you understand yeah i mean generally within posting videos it's more of sharing an experience of of something difficult that we went through and it generally ends with how we handled the situation but i feel like some people see this as we as as we're sharing our issue and we would lack their solution or opinion and that is not what we want most of the time yeah sometimes i ask for people's opinions which you know listen there's people out there nice people out there who have experiences that we don't. We're always learning from other people, other nice, helpful people. Um, I get that. A friend who was also a coworker called me cheap one time. I said, no, I save money on things that aren't important to me and spend it on things that are important. To survive and thrive these days, you need to be frugal. I consider it a compliment to be called frugal, even if they mean to imply cheap. We're completely debt-free and are enjoying an early retirement. You do you. You're doing a great job of it. Hmm. Well, good for you. Um, yeah, if somebody absolutely. calls you cheap, they're probably broke. Just can let you know. Yeah, they don't understand 
people who don't understand what frugality is don't understand how to be intentional with their money. They don't understand that you don't have to buy everything in order to be happy. And, and like to them, being financially successful is being able to buy whatever you want or being able to buy whatever you think you want, which is not actually what you want. It's not. People are buying what everybody else has. It's, it's just a competition to see who is better. Okay, another positive comment, then we're going to get to the the fun one, the rant. Okay, intentional spending is the essence of frugality. Thank you for your videos. Intentional spending is a great word. Okay, now we're going to go to the fun rant. So I did a video on how I like to save money in extreme ways, and I have not shaved for years. I don't shave. I don't shave my armpits. I don't shave my legs. I don't shave. And um, so this was somebody's reaction to me not shaving. Not shaving is gross. You can go to the dollar store and get a razor and shower gel. This is just being lazy. Hope your daughters shave. First of all, I want to say like all the negative comment, like a comment like this towards my daughters is one of the main reasons why I do not like sharing my kids on here because that is to me completely inappropriate to say that you hope that my daughters shave. Like to try and push your ideas on our kids. <laughs> like, and what if they don't? Like, don't like belittle. I don't know. It just it is so infuriating to me, Mama Bear. Don't talk about my kids like that. Okay. It's disgusting to, I mean, she went on a rant. Okay, so this is another comment from the same person. It's disgusting to look at a woman with hair under her pits. No, not classy at all. Well, she doesn't show herself with armpit hair, so she must be embarrassed about it. Do you walk around with your hair hanging from your armpit? It's called personal yes. hygiene, and nobody wants to see your grossness. Makes me wonder if you use deodorant, or do you walk around smelling? Show us a picture then. Why do you hide it? I have common sense, but your personal hygiene is a hot mess. Men's armpits smell too, especially those that work outside. Oh, you don't work, Asher. Oh, okay. Come on now. Your armpits smell pearly, pearly it smells, clean. I smell of fresh. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, so. That was weird. And you might need therapy. I thought that you would enjoy that. I really think it's weird that it would... Bother somebody else. But so it's, yeah, that it would bother somebody else. If you don't want to shave your armpits, honey, that's fine. Don't shave your armpits. You don't have to tell everyone else to shave their armpits. She was very invested in my armpits too. Like she really wanted to see my armpit hair and like and all of that. I felt like maybe maybe she secretly in wanted to see my armpit Maybe hair. she had an armpit hair fetish. Yeah, I don't know. I, I want you to know. I'm just really quite jealous that your armpit hair is thicker than mine. Like, it, it's kind of emasculating a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I also just, because somebody doesn't shave their armpit hair, does that mean they stink? Um, well, there is actually no proof that, scientifically, that body hair negatively affects hygiene. Actually, on contrary to I that. actually think it helps my deodorant stay on my armpits better. So just to clear that up, guys, we wear deodorant. Yeah, we do. So, got that one. Although, if you don't, I don't really care. We know people that don't wear deodorant, okay? Like, yeah, whatever. we're just not very judgmental people, so. There's whole cultures that don't wear deodorant. Like, everybody is so set on, this is the way things have to be, and I don't know. Anyway. Like I said, your viewpoint, you do, you do not necessarily have to share your viewpoint with everybody else. It's your opinion. Shave your armpits if you want to. And I don't not shave my armpits really because I'm lazy. I mean, I don't shave my armpits because I don't want to. Because it's... Like, why does it have to be lazy to choose not to do something? It's also scientifically not proven to help anything. If anything, it raises the high, raises your chances of infections and ingrown hairs and... And all that. There's absolutely no logic to it. It's absolutely an aesthetic viewpoint. Personal choice. Yeah. Aesthetic personal choice. 
Um, I but think it's still weird. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that that was funny. 